Good afternoon, everyone. This is Martha Spies I'm with Peace Action Maine. Welcome to our meeting and thank you so much for joining us. Our first speaker today is Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, and she will be introduced by Reverend Kilmer. Take it away, Reverend Kilmer. <clears throat> Thanks, Martha. Um, this is so much fun for me. Uh, I, I, I have known Liz since uh, she was eight. And so it's been, um, it's been, uh, it's fabulous to think that I am int introducing a very well-known person who's, who has proved herself in so many ways. Um, I've known her family for, the, for that long a period of time. I should say all three children in that family have PhDs. And so that says a lot about who they are. Um, Liz's father wrote a, a really very well-known book on J. Edgar Hoover. And her mom was a very, very special person who played a, a very major role within the Presbyterian Church and National Council of Churches where I had the honor really of working with her uh, in a variety of important justice and peace issues. Um, the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris is co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. She's co-chair with the Reverend Dr. William Barber II. She is the director of the Cairo Center for Religions, Rights, and Social Justice at Union Theological Seminary. She is an ordained minister in the Presbyterian Church USA and teaches at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Uh, Liz is the editor. Got a note about recording some progress. That's good. Uh, Liz is the editor of We Cry Justice, Reading the Bible with the Poor People's Campaign. She's author of Always With Us, What Jesus Really Said About the Poor, and co-author of Revive Us Again, Vision and Action in Moral Organizing. In 2021, she received the Hunger Leadership Award from the Congressional Hunger Center, along with um, William Barber. In 2020, she was named one of the faith leaders to watch by the Center for American Progress. In 2019, she was a Selma Bridge Award recipient and named one of 11 women shaping the church by Sojourners Magazine. In 2018, she gave the Building a Moral Movement TED Talk at TED Women was named one of the political 50 thinkers, doers, and visionaries whose ideas are driving politics, and was also named the Women of Faith Award recipient by the Presbyterian Church USA. Liz received her BA in Urban Studies from the University of Pennsylvania, her MDiv degree from Union Theological Seminary, where she was the first William Sloan Coffin Scholar, which is an honor in itself, and her PhD from Union in New Testament and Christian Origins. It is certainly my pleasure and, and my honor, really, to introduce you to Liz Theo Harris and to welcome her to Maine. Thanks, Liz, for being here. Well, thank you so much, um, Reverend Rich Kelmer and, and to the Maine Poor People's Campaign and to everybody in um, Maine that's with us today on May Day, this International um, Workers' Day, this day of peace and justice and proclaiming it and, and solidarity across the world. Um, it's really great to be with you all, and I have great love and great respect for the powerful organizing that's happening. Um, all across the country, including um, in Maine. And as Rich was saying, I, I grew up in a family that was deeply dedicated to, um, to doing peace and to peace action. Um, and I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we were a part of uh, peace action in Milwaukee. And um, 
And so I, I reach out in solidarity to, to everyone in Maine, um, you know, with, with, uh, with strong uh, feelings of, of solidarity and love and, and compassion and, um, and justice. Uh, so, so I want to talk today ab about um, why the Poor People's Campaign, um, a national call for moral revival, and why the the Mass Poor People and Low Wage Workers Assembly and Moral March on Washington into the polls on June 18th is all about um, peace, peace action, justice, and uh, a moral revival um, to to make things right um, and to overcome injustice. Um, you know, and I want to start a little bit with what's going on in the world right now. Um, uh, if we just look at uh, the 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 war and wars that are happening across our planet, um, we are indeed uh, closer to nuclear annihilation than we have been um, uh, in in my lifetime. Um, if we look at uh, the attacks on democracy in the United States and across the world, um, we are in no ways going forward. We're only going back. If we uh, take seriously the climate crisis and the impact of ecological devastation, um, especially on, on the poor across the world, but really on everybody, um, uh, we, we must take seriously the fact that um that that we cannot take for granted uh that we have an earth um or life living in and on it um because indeed um our existence is at threat um and we live in the richest country in the world um in the richest country in human history and yet there are 140 million people uh who are poor or one healthcare crisis job loss um uh storm uh, or small emergency from absolute economic war ruin. Um, and, and, and we in the Poor People's Campaign and, and many of us that have been in the peace and justice movement for, for a long time and others that are just joining uh, more recently, you know, see um, and understand that if we're serious about uh, addressing systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, militarism, and this distorted nor narrative of, of religious, especially Christian nationalism, that we can't get rid of one um, without, without addressing all of them. Um, and that the, the, the real way to address all of those issues is by building a movement, a moral movement from the bottom up. Um, and so that is what people thousands and thousands of people all across this country are doing. Um, and it stands on the shoulders and arm in arm with so much important um, work that's happening all across the, the country and world. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the cost, the cost of the levels of inequality and war and ecological devastation, um, rather than the, the costs of actually addressing those problems. Um, Again, in the United States, uh, we um, spend 53 cents of every discretionary dollar, 54 cents actually these days, on, on war and militarism, um, and less than 15 on healthcare and education and childcare programs and other anti-poverty efforts um, combined. And just last week, the Wall Street Journal um, proposed that we should actually double the military budget, um, which is already at $800 billion. Um, uh, and, and yet, um, uh, you know, and that budget, which was, which was passed with a, a very strong bipartisan consensus, um, with, you know, uh, actually billions more dollars in it than the Pentagon even asked for, um, that, that, that budget already, um, uh, you know, as we in the poor people's campaign have been saying needs to be cut, um, at least in half. Um, and probably a whole lot more. Um, so to have, um, you know, at the same time as, uh, you know, our nation has failed to extend a child tax credit, has failed to invest in climate resilient jobs, um, has failed to, to actually um, make sure that it has allowed, you know, 4 million children to be thrown back under the poverty line um, when we have the solutions at hand to actually address. Um, uh, to then be be you know standing at uh, at a moment and and looking at a horizon um, and a and a world 
and po political rulers um, and leaders who who are asserting that we we need to double down on even more militarism, on even more war, on even more violence. Um, uh, that is a very scary um, position to be in, um, and one as Dr. King talks about um, a, a nation that is approaching a, a spiritual death. Um, so I want us to think about this this idea of 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 those costs, the the monetary costs of of a, of a war economy of of twenty one trillion dollars um, since nine eleven into militarism and detention and deportation and mass incarceration um, and war um, and and yet you know uh, uh, you know no, you know very minimal investments even in a pandemic. Um, in terms of lifting the load of poverty, actually addressing systemic racism, protecting our democracy, and 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 making sure that we have a planet um, that is uh, protected, um, uh, what it's going to take to be able to change uh, uh, those costs into to seeing actually that uh, what we need is. Uh, you know, investments in all of those things, and that it's actually costing our nation and our world way too much to have both this inequality, but also this militarism and these militarized communities and, and, uh, and, you know, big polluters. Uh, and instead, we, you know, it, that those costs are too much. Um, and that, in fact, we have to, you know, change um, our, our very priorities and, and what we know it's going to take, because um, what it has taken in the past and what it's taking today is is a movement um, people coming together and organizing together and and putting forward uh, that it does not have to be this way and that indeed we we can um, you know build from the bottom up and we can uh, actually declare that everybody should have a right to live um, and does have a right to live and uh, that means to live in a, a planet that is healthy and peaceful um, so so that then brings us to to thinking a little bit about um, how we in the Poor People's Campaign talk about that we are not trying just to curse the darkness. Um, we're not just trying to point out all the things that are wrong with society, though they are many, um, but instead shine a light on what is possible, what is at hand, and and what must be done. Um, so you know, back uh, when we first launched the campaign, we put forward a moral agenda that that talked about, uh, you know, health care and living wages and uh, strong, you know, social welfare programs. It talked about investing in education and in housing and in, um, uh, you know, all, all types of the things that people need to thrive and not just barely survive. Uh, we, we made the connection between uh, you know, building up the infrastructure of our democracy as long as as well as an infrastructure of our roads and bridges and and uh, uh, water systems. Um, we made connections between uh, funding and supporting education and HBCUs um, and uh, you know trade schools um, as well as we um, uh, you know built up. Uh, uh, understanding and a um, and a power that embraced the protection of indigenous and native communities, um, of immigrant um, families, of of really uh, everyone that makes up this society, and and then when we put this agenda together, we we said, well, how do we make this um, happen? And and we we showed we put together a poor people's moral budget, and we said, you know. Again, the, the costs of, of this level of inequality are, are too great, but if, if we were to, to cut the military budget in half, if we were to invest in programs of social uplift, and if we were to have a fair taxation system, then this would more than um, uh, pay for all of the demands that poor and low-income people are making, that people of, of faith and of justice and of peace are, are making. And, and, and then we've kept on organizing. And, and last year we introduced, uh, uh, a third reconstruction resolution um, into into Congress, and and in that resolution we talk about um, you know banning a nuclear proliferation. We talk about um, all kinds of demands connected to to militarism and the kind of demilitarization of our communities, and then the putting of those resources 
um, you know, back into the things that our communities need, but also in diplomacy and in peace and in, in justice. And, and, and again, uh, you know, what's, what's so clear to us is that, that we actually have the solutions at hand. There is no scarcity of, of resources. There is no uh, scarcity of ideas. Right now, there's a scarcity of the political will and moral consciousness of our elected leaders to actually do what is just and right and peaceful. Um, but, and so th that's where we come in. Um, and so, so the, the call that I'm putting out and that I know that Peace Action has already taken up is for us to organize and mobilize and organize and mobilize and, and build a, a movement um, from below um, that is led by those that are most impacted by injustice, um, but, but crosses many different, really all the lines that divide us, you know, whether that's race or religion or geography, whether that's um, sexuality or gender or issue area, whether that's race or, or ethnicity or, uh, or age, um, we, we all are seeing people come together um, uh, from Alabama to Alaska, from, from the Bronx to the border, um, and from all the different uh, towns and cities um, across Maine uh, to, to say that somebody's been hurting our people. It's gone on for far too long. Somebody's been funding the war. It's gone on for far too long. Someone's been uh, violating our communities and it's gone on far too long. Someone's been been uh, uh, poisoning the water and the air and it's gone on far too long and we won't be, we can't be silent anymore. And so I wanna invite everyone here to join us. We have a powerful delegation coming from Maine to the poor people, mass poor people and low wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington into the polls. I know there are folks here that can, that can share information about getting on buses that'll be going from Maine and joining us in Washington, DC. What we know is that when we look at history and when we look at today, that, that we need a, a gathering, a declaration of the kind of power we're trying to build, that we have to shine a light on, on, on the stories and the solutions that are at hand. Those people who are most impacted by uh, injustice and, and the lack of peace and violence in the society, but who are, who are saying it, it, it it's going to stop and we're going to we're going to make a difference and and i again really would would invite everyone here to join and and look forward to being in discussion and dialogue with you all um as we build um this this movement as we build this work um uh as we as we put out this call that everybody's got a right to live and as we move as we say in our work move forward together and not one step back so so I'm, I'm looking forward to being in conversation with you all. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to keeping on working with everyone um, and uh, a happy May Day to everyone for sure. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Reverend Liz. Do you have time to stick around for one or two questions? I do, I do. Um, anyone who has a question, could you put it in the, the uh, reactions under raise your hand? John, you've unmuted. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. I think I've unmuted. Uh, practical question. Great. Uh, I've heard it said there are buses going from Maine. I'd like some details when and where, when I can pick one up. I'm 77, but I'm double boosted. And as long as I test without symptoms beforehand, I'll get on the bus. <laughs> That's Amazing. a good question. John, I know for sure that Josh and Marcy are going to answer that question right after Liz's section. So um, that it, sounds good. There is one more question from Rosalie. Go ahead, Rosalie. Here on. Thank you, Martha. Thanks very much for that nice presentation. I think the Poor People's Campaign is where it's at. Um, I think you're the focal point for all of us to converge with. And um, what worries me is that while we know that if we could change the budget priorities, that there is plenty of money, those at the other end who won't even pay their fair share of tax, um, they need to be shown some kind of imaginative alternative to capitalism because they just won't wiggle 
as long as they think they can maintain their, their um, fortune. So I don't know at what point we become a threat. I think it's, that's what we look for because it's the only time we see change from, from Congress and the presidency is when, we, uh, when the people seem to be too big for their britches and too important. Anyway, I, I'm not coming to, to Washington, but I certainly am paying close attention. And um, thank you so much for all that the Poor People's Campaign is accomplishing. And I will be certainly a contributor and helper in different ways. Thank you. Well, thanks for that. And, and, and you know, I think um, my comment would be in, in relationship to the issues you were raising is that, that, you know, the Poor People's Campaign has put out two goals um for our work and we basically said that once we accomplish those two goals we can move on to others but until we accomplish those two goals they will be our goals and and the first is to shift the narrative you know to get our nation get our world talking about who is poor why people are poor why it has to be this way the solutions that are at hand are the resources that are there to to actually do something about all of these different injustices, the nature of, of their interlockingness and, and, and why we need and are building an intersectional movement. But also um, the second goal is to then build power. Um, and, you know, Dr. King had a lot of really important things to say about power. Um, but a couple of my favorites are, are exactly about um, what I heard you just mentioning. Um, so he says that power for poor people will me really mean having the, the assertiveness, the aggressiveness, and the ability to make the power structure say yes, when they may be desirous of saying no, right? And, and what we've seen for decades, um, especially when it comes to justice and peace policies, especially when it comes to the predicament that, that 140 million, almost half of the US population of poor people um, are experiencing, especially when it comes to this current attack on democracy and and you know all of the different kind of injustices that we're seeing right now is is we've been getting a lot of no um, we've no to extending the child tax credit no to expanding health care and e even in a the worst health care crisis in in generations you know no to a living wage increase um, or minimum wage increase, despite the fact that, you know, a vast majority of, of folks that voted in the 2020 election said they were supportive of, of $15 an hour, you know, and, and yet we haven't seen it. You know, we've, we've been getting no to, you know, climate resilient jobs and no to all of the kind of really issues. And again, it, it's not that people don't want it. I mean, if we, if we, if we look across the country, you know, the policies that I was just speaking about, you know, two thirds of the population, three quarters of the population are, are, are in complete support of all of those things. And yet those in power um, and, and kind of their enablers have, have allowed to just keep on saying no to all of that. But, but that's where movement and that's where organizing comes in. Um, and the next thing that Dr. King says kind of connected to, to what power looks like is he says it would be in the height of naivete for us to expect those in power to implore us for our programs. Um, and and he, what he keeps on going and he talks about then building up the kind of political will to, to, to make it so that those in power cannot elude our demands is what he says, right? And I think that that's what you were speaking to, like the, that we're gonna be able to push forward, uh, you know, justice and peace. We're gonna be able to, to change the priorities of this nation away from militarism and war and towards, you know, human flourishing and life, you know, if we're able to build compelling power um, uh, and, and, and to, you know, nonviolently, but very, you know, directly, uh, you know, confront um, those with power and and make it so that it's not possible to keep on saying no. And and I think that is what the Poor People's Campaign is about. That is what you know grassroots organizing and communities across the the country, including across Maine, is about. It's kind of building up that power and then putting forward and shining a light on the possibilities. Um, because again, uh, what what we can tell and what we know is that that um, there there is the the 
capacity, there is the resources to actually address these problems and, and to address them fully, um, not even partially. Um, but, but right now we have to build up that political will to make it so. And so that's where a movement of the people come in. Um, we're not waiting for others to save us. Instead, we're, we're putting forward um, that this can be done and, and we're gonna make it happen. And we're gonna make it happen in a nonviolent um, and you know, a way that, that, that lift, you know, one of the things that we say in our work is, is when you lift from the bottom, everybody rises. And, and that's you know, exactly what, what this campaign and our demands are all about. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much, Reverend Liz. And we know that you're busy, so you're perfectly um, and welcome to join us for the rest of our meeting, but we understand you're busy. So we'll probably say goodbye and many, many thanks. Great. Very thank much. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks Bye. very much. All right, next, we have a great presentation. Let me not get distracted here. We have our local leadership from Maine, Marcy and Josh. Do you want to introduce yourself and we'll follow your lead is what we'll do. I'll be quiet. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, um, yeah, hello everybody. Um, my name is Josh Kaupala, I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm up in uh, Bangor. Um, I am one of the uh, co-chairs of the Maine Poor People's Campaign, and um, we have a little bit of a slideshow, uh, but uh, before, before that, I'll just say a word or two about myself. Um, you know, I uh, got it connected with the campaign about three, over three years ago, uh, when the Truth and Poverty Tour was coming through. Um, you know, was asked to, to share my story and, and testify um, and got, got really connected to the, the, um, the movement, uh, just the spirit of the movement, the songs, the, 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 the breadth of stories. Um, and, and from that initial interaction uh, with the campaign, um, you know, I, got connected to some other uh, state events and then eventually more nat national events um, and um, have stuck around um, and, and uh, moved into uh, and, and um, become uh, one of the tri-chairs uh, two years ago. Um, and for me, what keeps me coming back and keeps me uh, mobilized and excited to, to do this work with you all today and, and with my community on a regular basis um, is the fact that there is just so much despair out there in the world right now. Um, and with, with um, so many interlocking injustices, um, uh, uh, flexing their, their, their muscles in our, in our lives, um, poor people and uh, people who have been um, pushed to the margins by these systems, um, banding together, listening to each other, um, reminding themselves that these problems are systemic and not individual, and then building the power and the connections to, to really shift the atmosphere, um, both in those spaces and in the, the cities and states where, where we um, can push, um, has been something that, that has been able to keep my head above water through all of the difficulty, the poverty, the switching jobs, the lack of um, reliable healthcare, and, and all these other things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, my brief little introduction and, and Marcy, if you want to introduce yourself sure. and we can move. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Um, so, uh, my name is Marcy Mackinnon. I use she or her pronouns and, um, I actually got into the campaign in 2018. I um, actually in early, I got, and I got in through my church. I go to the Unitarian Universalist Church on Congress Street here in Portland. And um, the camp, the national campaign is hundreds of um, partner organizations and unions and um, churches from lots of different denominations and um, non-church, you know, um, all kinds of religious entities, basically. So, so the, the UU church has, has a partnership and um, 
I got in that way. We actually joined a book group at my church where we, we were reading the third reconstruction um, by one of the co-founders of the Poor People's Campaign, Reverend William Barber. And um, later on, I discovered that there was a movement associated with the book, with, with the tenants that were, that were laid out in the book and the history. And I had no idea. And I was um, very excited because I had never heard the intersectionality that Liz spoke of, the interlocking injustices of um, ha having a narrative where all those were woven together and, and where they were all being addressed at the same time. And um, so I was in um, the, the campaign kicked off um, simultaneously across the nation on um, May 14th and on 2018. And um, so I was involved in, in the first action that took place up at the Augusta State House. And um, I have stayed in the campaign because um, it is, uh, it's very healing for me. Um, I would say, at the time when I when I came to church, it was it was shortly after a, a very memorable election that we had in 2016. And um, Josh mentioned despair, and um, one of the ways that I deal with despair is is having to having a place to do something about it and to have a campaign. I, and I as as an individual with multiple identities in terms of race and, and sexuality and other ways of thinking, I've, I have felt very fragmented in different groups that I have organized in in the past. And so for me, um, being a part of the Poor People's Campaign has been um, healing and um, it has made me feel whole, like all of myself can come here with all of my concerns. So. Um, yeah, that's how I got here. And I can't imagine leaving it. My life wouldn't feel right doing something. And there's a place for everyone here in this campaign. And we're excited to show you a video of um, uh, things that, that Portland is, that Maine has been involved in. Um, many of our engagements are, are um, initiated by ourselves as a state campaign. Um, based on different issues that we've gotten involved in, but also we get a lot of direction from national because the idea is to nationalize. No one's issue is really that personal. Um, most issues that happen in different states are also happening in other states. And, um, and our power is in joining together and, and being united and having each other's back. And so um, some of the first, some of the activities that, that you'll see are, um, movements, uh, actions that are happening simultaneously across the country and other states, and some of them are just me. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and we'll talk about it after. Great, and Josh, while you're lining up the video, is the link in the chat, the link that John can follow to find out where to get the buses? The one that I just dropped in, yes. Uh, it, that's the link for the buses. Um, and the link before that is to just register for the event. So Great. yes, rally.co slash poor people's assembly with dashes slash from slash main. Um, and we'll make sure that's in the comments um, of this video as well. So, all right, um, I will now share my screen. Looking good. Let me read it. Yeah. And it's 
message that health care, health is a right for all, including those in jail, behind bars. The truth is, their distorted moral narrative is what's deepening the suffering in this country and making us all less secure. And if division is what they seek, then what we need to do is come together. Get it! Shut it down! If we don't 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 get it! Shut it down! We are a new... That was a lot. <laughs>
There sure were a lot of main scenes in there. Um, before we go into the next section, are there um, any clarifying, do you want to make any comments or observations? Well, I'll just add that, uh, yeah, those, that was uh, uh, quite a uh, menagerie of images, of actions, of uh, four years of actions here in Maine, uh, from State House um, launches to uh, truth and poverty tours that visited multiple states throughout, or multiple places throughout the, the state, um, to more recent uh, uh, calls to action around the Build Back Better plan and um, other, um, you know, the 14 priorities, um, getting our demands in front of the state house uh, in last a year ago uh, this last month, uh, this uh, or a year ago in March. And um, yeah, so I guess uh, just highlighting that, uh, you know, we've um, yeah been mobilizing and getting, uh, you notice a lot of the, the speakers are there. Uh, those folks are, are impacted individuals, low wage workers, mothers um, in, in subsidized housing, um, uh, queer folks, uh, straight folks, uh, you know, uh, Christians, non-Christians, atheists, um, all, all building power together um, and creating a moral fusion movement. Um, yeah, one, one mobilization, one uh, connection, one, um, yeah, uh, power building moment at a time. Great. Marcy? Um. Uh, let's see, just that it was a variety of, of scenes, all that which lift up the different um, the issues being one of them was at a Customs and Border Patrol um, action, which lifts, is lifting up militarism and racism and just uh, uh, othering in general, um, because that was around the time that um, immigrants were being detained and children were being separated from their families and um, and then it ranged to one of the, the state house one in the beginning was around uh, Medicaid expansion back when um, LePage was in office. And then um, at Golden and Collins office for, for national issues. So we really um, speak to a number of issues and um, have impacted leaders um, with the microphone, letting us know uh, what the truth is from, from their experience. Great. So yeah. and how to get in touch with you? I see your phone number is right there. Yes, my phone number is on the thing. If you have questions about, um, if you want me to help you sign up to get on a bus, if you need assistance with maybe some financial assistance to ride the bus, if you perhaps can't make it, but would like to make a donation, um, if you wanna just call and talk and see how your special gift or skill might be able to be, um, uh, helpful to the campaign or um, anything like that. We'd love a conversation and Fantastic. love to be in touch. And if you'd like us to come to your place and talk about what we do, we have lots of materials that we can share that as well. But we have, we have room for hundreds on the bus and we're waiting for you to buy your seat and make your reservation. Wonderful. Questions? John, did that answer your question? Yes, I think you did. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, we'll cycle into the next part of our program, which will be Emily. Welcome, Emily. Um, let, let's just say quickly that you're Code Pink's director of the social media and communications, and you're playing a huge role in organizing things from the Code Pink side of things. And if you can, um, we're really grateful that you could join us on the call and uh, um, tell us what's happening around Code Pink surrounding the Poor People's Campaign. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. And hello to everyone in Maine. I'm here in Los Angeles um, on the other side of the country. Um, but yeah, Code Pink has been working on a lot of uh, various actions to accompany the um, mass poor peoples and low wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington and to the polls. It's a very big mouthful. Um, so
so we've been working on a whole series of events that will take place um, starting Thursday, June 16th, um, going through Sunday, June 19th, which is also June, uh, Juneteenth, um, to kind of highlight the intersections between all these uh, socioeconomic inequalities, racism, uh, poverty, climate crisis, and militarism. So we're kind of bringing this anti-militarism piece to, um, we're helping bring it um, along with you and a bunch of other organizations um, to the Poor People's Campaign and explain the uh, various ways that militarism uh, contributes to all the horrific injustices and inequalities we have here in the US. So um, starting on June 16th, we're gonna be having um, that morning, we're gonna have an action outside of Congress um, that's gonna be led by our national co-director, Ariel Gold. So that's happening June 16th and the morning of the 17th. Um, Friday, June 17th, we're going to be having, um, following a community dinner that I believe the Poor People's Campaign is, is uh, organizing, we're gonna have a peace illumination. So it's gonna be a kind of installation piece um, that we're all gonna like walk to following the meal. Um, then the 18th, which is the big day of the assembly in March, we're gonna be um, part of uh, the anti-war kind of contingent. And we have a coalition um, that we're, we're building. I think we have now um, over 30 organizations um, currently signed up to join us in this um, anti-militarism kind of uh, messaging. Um, and our plan for the march is we're going to do these big art builds, which if you're in DC the week prior or in the area the week prior, um, we welcome you to come join us in building our big giant props. So we're gonna be having a prop to represent all these different um, life affirming kind of services or programs that we would rather see Pentagon spending allocated to. Um, so we're gonna have like a big house for housing um, and we're gonna have cost trade-offs, like how much it would cost, for example, to end homelessness in the US would only cost um, like, I think the equivalent of like less than two weeks of Pentagon spending. Um, so we're gonna have stuff like that to really uplift those connections and the intersectionality there. So we're gonna have healthcare, we're gonna have housing, education, climate change, police militarization, reparations, nuclear abolition. Um, so we're currently uh, trying to organize um, folks from different organizations into these different kinds of groups um, so we can have our messaging clear and um, you know, inter intersecting with what the Poor People's Campaign does because it's all so very connected. Um, so that's gonna be during the big march. Um, we're also gonna be having um, some fun like peace garden kind of stuff where we're going to have some painted pots hopefully and um stuff like that so really emulating the kind of local peace economy during that um march uh following that um i know this is a lot we have like i think seven or eight different events um following that on the 18th that saturday we're going to be having an anti-militarism teach-in um the location for that is still um up in the air we're still trying to figure out where everything is gonna happen, um, but we're hoping to have other organizations join us in um, you know, teaching folks and educating folks about um, uh, anti-militarism through a creative kind of uh, mediums or media. Uh, so we're saying testimony, uh, we're having our peace collective, which is the, our contingent of youth, of people under 30, um, they have made a zine that they're going to distribute, uh, performance, dance, music, um, skits. We have some folks doing skits, so we're um, trying to rep to uh, show that information and educate folks in an engaging kind of way that isn't just like pounding numbers at people. Um, and then that night, we're going to be having a dinner. Code Pink is going to be helping organize a big community dinner. Um, and then following that, we're going to have an arts and cultural night. Um, so that's all on Saturday. And if you're having trouble keeping track of this all, which I do not blame you because it's a lot, um, I'm putting the link to our like landing page for these events in the chat. Um, so you can take a look there. 
Um, finally, on Sunday, uh, uh, the 19th, we're going to be having working groups for peace in the morning. And then we're all going to be encouraging folks to join uh, Juneteenth celebrations in the streets uh, that day, that afternoon. So there's a lot going on. Um, we're currently in the process of doing all our organizing. And I invite uh, Peace Action Maine. Um, I hope you continue to um, come and help us kind of create this anti-militarism messaging. Um, if you are interested in signing up to join these individual like events, um, not the Poor People's Campaign March because they have their own big sign up, but these other things, you can sign up um, if you'd like at this form right here, just so we know that you're coming. Um, if you want to get more involved, we can reach out to you about ways that you might want to experience or engage uh, with the weekend and our events. But um, it, it's a lot. It's going to be really exciting. And we're so, so stoked for the weekend. Um, but yeah, also one more thing just logistically is we are going to be having um, affordable. It's It's not free, unfortunately, we wish we could do that, but we just can't, but we're doing affordable um, lodging for the weekend um, that looks like right now it's going to be in the Washington Seminar Center. So soon we will have that up on our site where you can reserve a spot if you um, want to stay um, the night or two nights um, with a bunch of folks, and it will be like a big kind of group sleepover type situation. Um, so yeah, a lot going on, but um, I don't know if you have any questions. That was a lot I went over. Yeah, you. there's a lot happening. I yeah. know that it, it's my understanding that um, there, there are going to be some of us from Peace Action Maine that are going to go down there a day, and a, a day ahead and stay down there. But for those of us who are going to be on the Poor People's Campaign bus, they're focused on the 18th. I understand if there's going to be a peace hub and that peace hub can join the poor people's campaign for it's four hours. I understand yeah. that different speakers are going to, they're going to be prime speakers and then speakers from each of the states. I'm kind of curious when the main state person is going to, going to speak, but you might not know that Josh or Marcy might know that. Uh, not quite. We don't quite have the the lineup yet, uh, but yes, there, there's there's planning to be impacted speakers from each of the, I believe, 40 states represented, um, or as many as as are able to get um, get there. So great. Yeah, don't know the specific. All right. Any last minute questions? I want to be respectful of our time. I see that we've come up to five already, which um, is a little rude. It happened a little too fast for me. But if there are any questions, otherwise, we have a lot of great links that are put in the chat that I will save and share with everyone else. So unless anyone else has a question, John, I see you're unmuted. Do you have any question or are you just? Nope, uh, but when the opportunity arises, I plan to call Marcy and find out about the bus on the 18th and uh, I'm hoping to be there. Wonderful. And uh, as I talk with you, Martha, I'm hoping to explore more possibilities as to how I can participate. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate your presence here and wish you a farewell and having a great rest of the day. And I really, really appreciate that you, were you could join us and you can leave while I figure out how to shut everything down without uh, losing the chat and that sort of thing. Thank right. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Martha. Yep. Bye-bye.